When we look at adding rational expressions, it's just like when we add two fractions together. We can only do that if they have the same denominator. And you remember doing problems like 3 fifths plus 1 half. We had to get a common denominator, which was 10. So we'd multiply the first fraction by 2 and the second fraction by 5. And that would give us um, 6 plus 5 over 10, which would simplify to 11 over 10. We get that common denominator and then combine the numerators. That was the strategy for adding fractions. Therefore, to add fractions together, we begin by finding the least common denominator of all the present denominators. Let's look at some examples where we're doing just that. Let's start simple. Let's start with 3 over 5x to the fifth, y to the fourth, plus 2 over 3x to the fourth, y to the fifth. And as I look at these two denominators to figure out what we're going to multiply them by, looking at the numbers 5 and 3, the 5 needs to be multiplied by a 3, and the 3 needs to be multiplied by a 5. Looking at the x's, we've got 5 on the left and 4 on the right, which means we need an additional x on the right to make them all x to the fifth. Similarly, with the y's, we need an additional y on the left so that they're all y to the fifth. So we're going to multiply by 3y on top and bottom and by 5x on top and bottom. And when we do that, we'll go ahead and multiply the 3 times the 3y to get 9y and the 2 times the 5x to get 10x over the common denominator, which is 15x to the fifth, y to the fifth, for our final solution. Now, that was easy because the denominators were already in factored form. But what if we've got something like x squared plus x over x squared plus 2x minus 8 minus 1 over x minus 2? Now, the first thing I would say is be very careful with subtracting fractions. To help me out, I'm going to add the opposite. I'm going to make it plus and make the second numerator negative. So now it's a negative 1. Addition is always easier, so distribute that negative through the numerator before you do anything. All right, now as we look at our fractions, the first fraction, that denominator can factor. That's x plus 4 times x minus 2. And when I do that, what I notice is it already has an x minus 2, just like the fraction on the right. But the fraction on the right is missing the factor x plus 4. So we're going to multiply by the factor that it is missing in order to get both of them to have a denominator with x plus 4 and x minus 2. In the numerator, the first fraction didn't change. It's x squared plus x. In the second fraction, though, I'm going to distribute the negative 1 through. Remember, it's negative because we distributed the negative through. So now we have negative x and a negative 4, making sure that negative goes all the way through. And we end up being able to do a little bit of simplifying here. Uh, combining like terms in the middle, x minus x is 0. So that's gone. So we're just left with x squared minus 4 over x plus 4 times x minus 2. Let's check if that can reduce by factoring the numerator. When I factor the numerator, it's x plus 2 times x minus 2 over my denominator of x plus 4 times x minus 2. And sure enough, we see that those x minus 2's can reduce out, leaving just x plus 2 over x plus 4 for our final solution. So that's kind of the general idea we're going to take, is we're going to build up the denominators so that we have the same denominator based on the missing factors. So if I have 2x over 2x plus 3 plus a 7x plus 9 over 2x squared plus 5x plus 3, we need to first factor the denominators to make sure we know what's missing from the various fractions. The first fraction, 2x plus 3, isn't going to factor. The second fraction does factor. And a little pro tip to help kind of make the factoring easier, if one fraction has a denominator of 2x plus 3, the other fraction probably has a denominator, a factor of 2x plus 3 as well. So let's see if that's going to work. 2x times what gives me 2x squared? Probably x. 3 comes from 3 times 1. And if they're both positive, sure enough, from the middle, we get 3x plus 2x equals 5x. And so we know that our factoring is, in fact, correct. 
Notice the first and second fraction both have 2x plus 3, which means the first fraction is only missing the x plus 1 factor. So we'll multiply by x plus 1 on top and bottom so that both fractions have the same denominator of 2x plus 3 times an x plus 1. In the numerators, we'll distribute the 2x through, giving us 2x squared plus 2x plus 7x plus 9. And now let's simplify to see uh, if we can reduce that at all. Combining the like terms in the middle, I have 2x squared plus 9x plus 9 over my common denominator of 2x plus 3 times x plus 1. Sure enough, that numerator is going to factor. That's going to be 2x times x. And 9 is probably 3 times 3. And sure enough, if you check that, that'll give us the 9x in the middle over the common denominator of 2x plus 3 times x plus 1. And yes, we do have a factor in the numerator and denominator that can reduce out. So we're just left with x plus 3 over x plus 1. Let's do one more problem, maybe one that's a little more challenging than these three. Let's try x minus 2 over x squared minus 2x minus 3 minus x plus 1 over x squared minus 5x plus 6. And again, the first thing I'm going to notice is subtraction. It's really easy to make a sign error with a subtraction problem. So I'm going to take this minus and make it a plus, and I'm going to distribute it onto both terms. So I'm going to treat that like negative x and a negative 1. Distribute it all the way through. Now when we factor our denominators, the first denominator factors to x minus 3 times x plus 1. The second denominator factors to x minus 3 times x minus 2. So looking at this, they both have x minus 3. The first one is missing the x minus 2, so I'll multiply by that on top and bottom. The second one is missing x plus 1, so I'll multiply that on top and bottom. When I do that, that's going to give me my common denominator of x minus 3 times x minus 2 times x minus 1. And in my numerator, we're going to have to multiply this out. So x times x is x squared minus 2x minus 2x plus 4. Remember, these are negative. So we've got a minus x squared minus x minus x and minus 1, multiplying those through. And then as we simplify, we'll combine like terms. So we've got x squared minus x squared. Those are 0. Those are gone. Negative 2x, negative 2x, negative x, and negative x. I think that's negative 6x. And we've got a plus 4 minus 1 is a plus 3 over my common denominator of x minus 3 times x minus 2 times x minus 1. Now, to make sure we can't reduce, we're going to factor that numerator, see if anything can reduce out. I'm going to pull out a negative 3, which leaves me with 2x minus 1 over my common denominator of x minus 3, x minus 2, and x minus 1. And it looks like this time nothing's going to reduce out. So that's my final solution. So that's how we add and subtract with rational expressions. We factor our denominators, see what factors are missing, and be very careful with subtraction. You have to distribute that negative all the way through. Very common error, distribute that negative all the way through before you multiply things out. And as always, check to see if your final answer can reduce. The best way to get good at these is to practice several of them. So take a look at that homework assignment. Let your instructor know if you have any questions. And good luck with adding and subtracting rational expressions.